everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I just really wanted to play around with my Ecoline watercolours and uh, try something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I've been meaning to draw something for a friend and um, since we both have a aficionado for monster girls I really wanted to draw a really cute monster moth girl. Um, this was just really an excuse to play around with Ecoline watercolours and try some new techniques that I've been um, looking at as well as see how the paints apply using different techniques and different methods. Now um, I'll let you know what equipment I'm using here. I'm using Canson Mixed Media Paper. Here you can see me using my WH Smith watercolour pencils. This is just to further outline the sketch and rough design that I was going down for, almost to create a solidified um, finished sketch piece. Um, I also use the Ecoline watercolours as well as um, some Faber no, sorry, Dela Rowney acrylic paint and some white gel pen and polychromos. For the full list of equipment, as always, it will be listed down below. So after I finished my sketch, I w went to go and grab my Ecoline watercolours. But there can be a bit of an issue with these. Um, so Ecoline watercolours are liquid watercolours and they essentially are in a glass vial or a glass pot and sometimes unfortunately the lid gets stuck but I have a little trick for you here and this can be used for any type of ink pot what you want to do is you want to run the ink or your watercolor ink pot under a hot tap and um, this basically makes the glass change shape so that you can easily remove the lid it also will give a chance for the um, liquid to essentially dissipate um, so that any liquid that was stuck underneath there you know you can remove it and this actually makes life a little bit easier for you you can do this with any glass ink pot um i had this trouble a while back with my Winsor and newton inks and it's a little handy tip that i do recommend it means that you don't end up wasting all that beautiful ink and you can reuse it again in the future so the technique I really wanted to try was a wet on wet technique where you allow the colours to run against each other. And since Ecoline watercolours um, are very bright and vibrant, since they are liquid watercolours, I'm able to get a really nice effect with this. Now, I would love to try the Dr. PH Martins ones since the Ecoline ones unfortunately are not light fast. Um, but I absolutely adore the colour and the vibrancy with these. Um, the Dr. PH Martins unfortunately are a little bit out of my priority range um but these currently right now i've really really enjoyed using them i just get a little bit more pigmentation that i can't quite get with the um winter newton uh, cotton watercolors now i will say if you are looking at liquid watercolors um just because they are a little bit more pigmented they tend to um leave the color more uh, whereas like I could say that other watercolours, uh, especially pound watercolours, um, yes, it will take quite a few layers for you to get your desired effects. However, it's a little bit more forgiving in that sense. Whereas these, they kind of, in a way, they would stain the paper. Um, just because the colours are so pigmented, you are going to get a very strong colour, but you are also going to struggle to lift that colour as well. So there's very little room for mistakes. So I'm basically trying out a few different techniques here that I've been I've been watching loads of watercolor videos lately to try out different techniques, and I really thought that this would be perfect. The wet and wet technique really works well with the liquid watercolors. I have an awful lot of fun um, working with things and like working with these in particular, just because I find them an awful lot of fun to um, basically, you know, work around and go in that aspect the um inspiration for this character actually was a fluffy moth i can't quite remember the name of the moth exactly but i combined a few different ones to create the moth effect that i was after i wanted the um pattern to be really bright and really vibrant because i know some moths tend to not be as vibrant but i wanted to reuse the same colors again and again in the palette um, so you'll notice that I'm reusing a lot of yellows and oranges and reds um, in the bottom to keep on drawing your eye back to the piece because I want the main focus to be this girl. That's why you have like the focus of the circle behind her to represent the moon. And later on, we'll use a little bit of glow in the dark paint to create some magic. <laughs> 
I really think it's a good idea to experiment with watercolours. Now, liquid watercolours, they are a lot of fun, as to say, but there are some disadvantages of using them. Um, just because they can be so pigmented, as I said, mentioned earlier, you can um, struggle to lift them back off the paper. Um, so, yes, you, while you do get a really beautiful pigment and a really strong pigment with them, um, it can be quite difficult to work with sometimes. Uh, some of the things that I found was like areas were bleeding because they weren't drying as quick as I expected them to. Um, sometimes colours would muddy because I wasn't anticipating them to bleed in certain ways. Um, it's definitely something that you'll end up going over and learning. And I find that once you've gone very dark with this, it was very difficult to lift that colour back up. I managed to fix some of it later by using some polychromos to lift certain areas up and re-bring back certain areas that I um, maybe went a little bit too dark with but as you can see it was certain areas that I did particularly struggle with. Um, another disadvantage as well is I never know how much ink to put. I normally put like a drop or two on the palette itself um, so when I first like put the palette out I'll put like a drop or two on there and that can last you quite a bit um, but I never know how much is too much and I sometimes feel like if you put a bit too much out it can be a bit of a waste um, but I've had some of these pots now for a few months and so far so good I'm not run, running low on any colours I've been using them on and off in my sketchbook and I've overall had a lot of fun trying out different techniques with them um, I definitely think the wet and wet technique works so well with this that sky um in particular just turned out really really nice um especially with the bleeding and all that um it's just something that because the colors are so pigmented it's not something i can quite achieve unless i get a lot of layering done with my other watercolors but overall it's a lot of fun um i do recommend them if you want to try them out if you want to try out a liquid watercolor they are definitely cheaper than the dot ph martins um i do have to warn you they are not light fast but um they are i as i said the colors speak for themselves they are really beautiful and really vibrant i cannot sing the praises of the colors enough um i actually found out the other day there is more than 12 colors and i was like i need to get other colors now because i want to get a really really i want to get some more tonal ranges in there because i have the basic set and i bought two more um because you can get the basic set of 10 and then they have other colours and I was really surprised about this because I didn't know and I wish I could have bought more but I could only get two at the time. They're not too expensive, it's around about um, 20 to 30 pounds for a pack of 10 um, but I will say they are the main colours and you can mix and match these. The only thing it doesn't really come with is a white um, but uh, I you don't really need white if I'm honest you can um create different color color tones and all sorts with these just few, the 10 colors that you can get um I just wanted some different tones so this is the acrylic paint I've used now I've used acrylic paint in the past um I actually still have it left it was the um Unichrom Glow and I really really loved the results of this. I still have um, about a third of a tub left but I saw this in Cast Arts the other week and I had to pick it up and try it out to see whether or not it was worth it. Now with Glow in the Dark paint I do have to let you know you are going to put quite a few coats on. Um, this one I think I ended up putting six coats on and I still did not get the pigmentation that I really wanted whereas with the Unichrom I got the re I got after about six coats I got a really bright vibrant color um so it's not something I can recommend it really really popped really nice on the lighter colors but on the darker colors unless it gets a lot of concentration of like light on it it really did struggle to shine uh, like for example I put glow in the dark stars and if I put that under my daylight bulb for about 
10, 15 minutes, you'll see them then. But if I just put it in natural light, you won't see it, unfortunately. Whereas with the Unichrome Glow, I did um, get a really good pigmentation with that. Um, so unless you're using it on light colours, it's not something I can massively recommend. Um, it does create a nice cool effect. I can imagine in Halloween, I'm going to end up using this paint a fair amount to create some fun spooky pieces. So the masking tape I used was really cheap masking tape, as you can tell, and it made all the edges feather, but I kind of really like the effect. It just looked really, I'm really happy with this piece. Um, it was really fun to try going back to these Echoline colors and trying them out again and trying some techniques that I really wanted to try for a while, um, as well as being able to try out this paint. And I really hope my friend enjoys this piece. I'm going to gift this to her. Um, in the next few weeks and I just really hope that she likes it um but overall yeah I did enjoy doing this piece if you guys had glow in the dark paint what kind of piece would you create and if you created a moth character what kind of moth would you base it on or what kind of creature would you base it on this is what the paint looks like in the dark and as you can see where the moon is it glows really nicely and on the candles on the bases it did on the flames not so much um this is under very very dim lighting and you can barely see it which unfortunately um it just didn't shine the way I wanted. So that's my um, thoughts on the De La Rowney acrylic. Let me know what you think down below. And if you want me to try out any future art supplies, let me know in the comments section down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. And as always, folks, stay creative.